Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. We give God thanks and we give God praise and we give God the glory for His goodness and His mercies and His blessings towards us. Praise His holy name. Brother Clinton. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. I'm going to ask you to say a prayer for me later. But I'm going to just open up in prayer now and um, asking God to touch us and take control. The word of God says, where there's two or three come together, that he will be there in the midst. So we are more than the number now. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we bless your wonderful holy name. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings towards us. Thank you for this day. For your word said, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for your people. Thank you for your children who will come together to share your word. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify your name. We thank you for our family and our loved ones and everyone that is dear to us. Take full control of this telecommunity conference, O oh God, and direct it according to thy will and according to thy grace. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, say God bless you, sir. God bless you. It was wonderful to see, to be in the house of the Lord today, to, you know, to hear the word of God and to share the word of God with God's wonderful people. It has been a blessing. Amen. And we give God thanks and we give God praise and we give God glory. Uh, we just want to lift him up in songs and prayer. You know, when we have something inside of us, it ca we just can't keep still. We just have to do something. We just have to praise him. We have to glorify him. We have to lift up his name. We have to glorify him because he's worthy. He is worthy. Yeah. Look what he did for us. Look what Jesus did for us. He died for us. And he said, No greater love has any man than this, than that a man should lay down his life for his friend. Because we could not be saved without the blood of Jesus, as we heard today in the church. Uh, pastor telling us so the blood of Jesus, the value of the blood of Jesus. It is a blood that reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. It's a blood that gives me strength from day to day. The blood of Jesus. Imagine all those 2,000 years ago when Jesus died on the cross. And his blood has never lost its lost his power. And in time we, praise the Lord, in time we're in trouble. And any time the enemy come upon us as a flood, just raise up and say, The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. The blood of Jesus. And this, the devil himself will tremble because he fear the blood and the power that is in the blood. Praise the Lord. So we are, we are blessed that we have this access to the blood. We not only have this access to the blood, we also have the access to come before God and to talk to God ourselves. Before Jesus died, it was not so. And we heard today how only the high priests, the high priest alone could go into the holies of holies and commune with God. All the priests had to stay in the outer court and wait for the high priest to return. Praise the Lord. But now we can approach the presence of God. We can call upon him his name whenever. We can lift him up whenever. Because he is ever present with us. And we have access to call upon him through his blood. So we are blessed. We are blessed people. And God bless every one of you out there listening to me. And that, you know, help let us continue to lift up the gospel banner. Today, um, I want to later on speak to our hearts about excuses, you know. And um, I'm going to ask um, 
Uh, sister, sister Rosie, there, can you read the scripture for us? Um, okay. Yeah, it's a uh, call you later, it's taken from St. Luke chapter 14. Okay. I'll ask you to read that for me. Okay. And, um, and we go from there. But pray, praise the name of the Lord. We are here today to glorify God and to magnify his holy name. He is worthy of all our praises. He's worthy of everything that we have done for him. He's t you know, when we think about where we could have been, you know, the, the psalmist says, the writer says, draw back the curtains of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to ask God to draw back the curtains of memory now and then. Because if it wasn't for the, 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 the psalmist says, if it wasn't for the Lord who was on our side, then men would swallow us up quick. Hallelujah. But because the Lord is on our side, we are here today. Praise the Lord Jesus. We see the trials and the tribulation of Job. When the, the enemy saw Job and this enemy said, Does God, does Job serve God for naught? So the devil tempted God to, put, um, to destroy Job. And we see what Job went through. We see what Job went through and how his faith, his faith delivered him because he trusted in the Lord. So his faith delivered him and so his faith, our faith will deliver us also. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just going to sing a song and then we move on. Praise the Lord. When I look around and see what the Lord has done for me, it makes me want to go all the way. Sometimes my burden's heavy, sometimes I can be free. When I look around and see what the Lord has done for me, when I look around and see what the Lord has done for me, makes me want to go all the way. Sometimes my burden's heavy, sometimes I can be free. When I look around and see what the Lord has done for me, when I look around and see what the Lord has done for me, it makes me want to go all the way. Sometimes my burden's heavy, sometimes I can't be free. But when I look around and see what the Lord has done for me. Praise the Lord. Brother Clinton. Yes, sir. I want you to give us a prayer, please. I want, you to, now I want to make a special prayer for those that are suffering, for those that are out in the cold, for those who are less privileged. And just ask God to touch the vulnerable ones and lift them up by His grace and help them to come to the knowledge of Christ. Yes. Now, whatever the Lord lay on your heart. Okay. Most gracious Father, as we come this evening again and this, um, and this service, O oh God, I'm asking you to guide and protect us, dear Father, because you know you? the reason why we are on this Hello? service, because we do not need, O oh God, in, in, in our um, building where mm -hmm. we usually yes, Father God, you are, you will make this safe for us that we can do this by phone, although we haven't seen each other's um, face. But Lord, you know everything best. And I'm asking you, dear mm -hmm. Father, to touch your children right now. Mm -hmm. Who, uh, whoever are listening, oh God, and those who decide to join in to, um, to communicate with us, dear Father, and this service. 
Lord, I'm asking you to touch them right now. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Jesus. He just said that blood on Calvary is cross for our sin. And today, O oh God, we can lift our hands and say thank you, Father, because you are the one and only true living God. Lord, bless us. Bless this service again, O oh God. Touch it, um, the, the person who will be giving the, the, the words, O oh God. I'm asking you to put the, the, word, the, the word in his mouth and the meditation in their heart. So whatever they say, dear Father, it may be accepted in our sight. Lord, I thank you and I praise you and I give you all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise God bless God. you. I think I heard Brother David coming in. God bless you, Brother David. I know your voice. Praise God the Lord. Bless you, my God bless you. Praise the Lord. We're just having a little teleconference and we're asking God to, you know, to lead us and to guide us. Everything we do is to the glory of God, our Father, you know. We don't do nothing for ourselves, Amen. but we just want to lift up his name. I know, um, I, I know our brother here does a, a, a Zoom service, which is God has blessed him um, with the Zoom service that he does, you know, getting, getting people together. You know, the, the church might be closed down, but, you know, we can keep church anywhere. That's the good thing about yeah. it, you know. Um, Jesus, the, the woman of Samaria said to Jesus, Our Father worship in the mountain, and thou said that in Jerusalem we should worship. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, you worship, you know not what, because the time cometh and now is, when the Lord seek a true worshiper, to worship him in spirit and in truth. And when we worship in God in spirit and in truth, of course it's good to be assembled in the house of God. It is good to be assembled in the house of God, but when we can serve God anywhere, and that's what Jesus was saying to the woman of Samaria, you can worship God anywhere. God is with, with you and in you, and it should be in us as children of God. So thank God for those who are reaching out to come together in their home in various means and ways, because we are told that there's only 30 people that are allowed in the church. So we are limited now, and it's like the church is under persecution. But thank God for those who are holding on and talking about the Lord. You know, there's a song that says, uh, I feel good, good, good. Every time I talk about Jesus, I feel good. And I feel real wonderful. And you know, if we, when we really love the Lord, we must have this joy inside when we talk about Him. You know, you have a good friend and when you talk about that, when you hear about that friend, you want to talk about him because the friend has good qualities. And so we know our God, Jesus, has got some wonderful qualities. He's God. He's immaculate. He's holy. He's righteous. And so when we know this God who we serve, we will lift him up and we'll praise him and it will be joy in our soul when we talk about him. So God bless you. I'm going to ask Sister Rose to sing a song before we go any further. Um, Sister Rose, are you ready to sing for us? Greetings. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. Greetings. Greetings, Brother David. Greetings. Greetings, Greetings. Hallelujah. Amen. Greetings. Greetings. I'm waiting in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Come and lay down the burdens you have carried. Oh, in the sanctuary, God is near. He is here, he is here to break the yoke and lift the heavy burden. He is here, he is here to heal the heart and heart and break the broken. So come and let down the burdens you have carried. Oh, 
anointing hallelujah in his sanctuary there's a stillness in the atmosphere come lay down the burden that you carried for in the sanctuary God is here praise the Lord thank you sister Rose for that lovely song praise the Lord you know when we know we're in the presence of God it makes all the difference you know it just makes all the difference when we the Bible says in the presence of of the Lord there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pledges forevermore and um, when we know that when we talk about the Lord that there's a joy in our hearts you know and there's a stillness in the sanctuary of God and you know I, I just think about um, Solomon when Solomon dedicated the temple and the Bible says Solomon prayed an earnest prayer to the Lord. And the yeah. Lord came down in his temple. You know, it was just awesome. The presence of the Lord coming down in his temple like a pillar of smoke and filled the house. And the Lord spoke unto Solomon. Oh, praise the Lord. And there's a scripture that David, you know, when this quote says, If my people who are called by my name should humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, I will hear from heaven and answer their prayers and heal their land. What a promise and what a covenant, you know, that God says, If my people, and we are the people of God, we just need to turn to God. Draw near to Him. Draw near to Him because He is drawing near unto us. And it's awesome. It's just wonderful to know this mighty God of Jacob. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, the Bible says that God called Abraham out of the Earl of the Chaldees. He said, Walk before me and be thou perfect. And the same thing that God said to Abraham, he's saying to us today, walk before yeah. me and be perfect. God wants us to walk before him in perfection, in righteousness, in truth, in holiness, in peace, and have the fruit of the Spirit, which is faith, love. And you know, you know when we are walking with God, we are different from the world. He said, come out of, from among them and be he separated. Touch not the unclean thing. God is asking us to come out. So we are separate. You know, we are in the world, but we are not of this world. This is not our home. Praise the Lord. This world is not our home. We are passing through. We are sojourners. Amen. Amen. Because as we know for truth, every one of us that live it now sooner or later if Jesus don't come we'll die death is sure because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and after the death then come the judgment praise the Lord and then the boy God said where the tree falleth there it will lie 
So if we if we are serving God and we die, that's why I said I am the resurrection and the life. He that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. And he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful promise. So praise the Lord. We thank God for his promises towards us. And we thank God for his mercy and for his grace. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm going to read a scripture today. Um, and it's taken from Luke um, chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. As I mentioned, um, today our, our topic will be, um, as the Lord lead, it will be about excuses. Excuses. Praise the Lord. Um, so... Um, it's Luke chapter 14, and, and I'm going to read from verse 16 and to verse 33. Luke chapter 14 and verse 16, and I'm going to read to verse 33. Luke, say Luke. What scripture is that? Say Luke chapter 14. What scripture is that? What scripture? Luke chapter 14, 16 to 32. What scripture? Luke, Saint Luke, Saint Luke. Oh, okay, Luke, Luke, Luke chapter 14. Okay, okay, Saint Luke right, chapter okay. 14. Saint Luke chapter right, 14. Okay, carry on, carry on. Okay, carry on. Sorry, sorry. Bless you. Bless you, Brother Binti. Glad to hear you. God bless <laughs> you, right. sir. Bless you. We had a, we had a wonderful We had a wonderful time on God Friday. Bless God bless you. We had a wonderful time on Friday night. God bless you. Thank you. So we go, we're going to read from verse Luke chapter, St. Luke chapter 14 and verse 16. I'm going to start reading from verse 16. And it reads thus. God bless you. And it reads thus. Psalm 14 it says, verse 16, And then said he unto them, A certain man made a great supper and bade many, and he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are already now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first one said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must need go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed the Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry with his servant, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither poor, the poor, the name, the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, yeah. Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto his servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, None of those which were bidden shall taste my supper. And there were great multitude with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And who will serve and do it, bear his, do it not bear his cross, 
and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intended to build a tower, sit it down, not first, and count the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Lee's apply, after he has laid the foundation, he's not able to finish it. All that behold, it will begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was unable to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down and consult whether he's able with his 10,000 to meet that comet against him with 20,000? Or else, while the other is yet on afar off, he sent a messenger, a messenger and desired condition of peace. So likewise, whosoever be of you that forsaken not all hath, not all that he hath, cannot be my disciples. Praise the Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord put this word upon my heart. Praise the Lord. It's a word that, you know, I think every child of God should think about, you know, how it yes. is when, you know, God call us. Amen. So, as the scripture says, thank God, I just want to thank God for his word. May the Lord bless his word and anoint his word as I express his word. God bless his word today to our hearts. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We praise you, Father. We bless you, Father. We glorify your name. Thank you for your word, Lord. We bless you. Let it be, hallelujah, Receive in our hearts. Help us to absorb your word as you said your word will go out. It will not come it will not come unto you unaccomplished. It will accomplish that which you've sent it. Pray you will anoint your word, Lord, anoint my lips, and let your word go forth. Hallelujah, the power of the Holy Ghost. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So uh, you know Jesus spoke many many parables but this one's a very interesting parable that he spoke and as we know that a parable is an earthly story which has an heavenly significant you know it uh, it's an earthly story that tells us about heavenly things and yes the word is telling us that a certain man made a great supper and bade many to come you know, and the earthly part of it is like, you know, you have in a big celebration and you invite your guests, those who you note to be worthy to come to your celebration. And, you know, you expect them to be there. And you're looking forward to have them at your celebration. And when the time comes, for them to come to the celebration, they are not, they, they didn't show up. So this is telling us that when we hear, hear the word of God, God expects us to take heed. That so the good man, in a heavenly sense, is God of the Lord. When he calls us, he calls many. As many as hear the word of God are called to the great. <clears throat> to the great supper as many as hear his voice as many as hear his word are called to the great supper so he sent his servant the bible says at supper time to, to them who that were bidden to come he said come because all things are now ready so imagine the significance of you having a celebration from an earthly perspective and you have people who you know that you think they would honor you honor your word and come and join you in the celebration and they did not come I think even from a human perspective we would be disappointed we'll be really, I would be disappointed any one of us would dis be disappointed if we're expecting people that we know to come to a celebration, invite them, and they, they make light of it. And the Bible says, in verse 18, it says, They 
all with one consent, began to make excuse. Excuse. Excuse me. I have to find a reason not to come. In other words, I have something more important to do. So you're taking the invitation of the good man lightly, you know? And so when God call us through his word, it's not something that we should take lightly. It is a very serious calling. It is a calling is calling us unto salvation. Salvation is something that money cannot buy. We are given the, the cost of salvation. It's, it's a, it has been a great cost. It cost the blood of Jesus. And I think that Jesus gave his life for us. It's a great, great price. A very great price. Which king in this world, which prime minister, which government in this world would go on the cross for his country, for his people? You tell me. Any country you think of, there is none. But Jesus did. Jesus came from heaven. He was God. And he came down clothed in the form of flesh for the debt. He came to die. So he knew where we, what, why he was coming. He came to die. To die to save us. And after he has come and died and save us he has called us come unto me all he that are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest so the first said unto him the first excuse was I have bought a piece of ground and I must need to go and see it so you have bought yourself a piece of ground, a property. But it can't wait. I have to go and see it. I cannot come. And this is an excuse. Why? If you give an invitation, why can't you attend the invitation and then go look at your piece of ground that you have purchased? That is just a lame excuse. You know, sometimes people make an excuse. They get up in the morning and they don't feel like going to work. And they phone in and say, oh, uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not well. I, need, I can't come to work today. That's an excuse. You just don't feel like going. You don't feel like going. And so, because the invitation went out, and the man thought his piece of ground was more important than the invitation to come to the supper. He made light of it. Now, there's a significant, the significant of this is that the supper is a great event. And it's more, it's, it's more important. The, suf, this, the supper means a lot. It's like those when Jesus come, there will be a marriage supper because Jesus is the groom and the church is the bride. So when Jesus, the next event is the rapture of the church, Jesus is going to come back for the church. He's coming yeah. back in mid-air. And the Bible says, they that are dead in Christ shall be caught up. Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back for his own. He's coming for all his children who loves him. And those who welcome his appearing. He's coming back again. Praise the Lord. Amen. So when he comes again, there shall be, he is the groom, the church is the bride. He's coming for his bride. And will be caught up. And there will be a marriage supper. There will be a marriage supper because there will be a wedding. We will be united with Christ. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you that where I am, he may be also. 
So he's coming back yeah. for us. He's coming back for us, brethren. He's coming to take us away. And there shall be a marriage supper. So the significance of this is that everyone is invited to the marriage supper. And when, when we put other things before the Lord, is we are making excuses. We have to have time for the Lord. Well, he took, out, he took time out for us. He took time when he left his rainbow circle crown, throne, throne in heaven, condescended, born of a virgin, to for the suffering and for the death to save us. He took time out for us. But you know, I notice that these days people find it hard, very hard to find time. And they make excuses. Make so many excuses. But brethren, God bless you who have time for the Lord. And I know, I know, I know all of you, maybe all of you on the sound of my voice, love the Lord. And God, yes. God knows the love that you have. No one can take that from you. God knows the love that you have for Him. And so we are not among those who make excuses. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Then the other one said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I must prove them. Please, I pray thee, have me excuse. So he bought five yoke of oxen and he hasn't, he can't excuse himself just for the invitation. He can't excuse himself to attend the supper. It is, it is a great supper. The word great is a great supper. It's not just a supper. It's a once in a lifetime supper. But he thought maybe it's not that important. I have other things. And so we find people these days, they find so many things to do. But when it comes to time to find time for Jesus, to have time to talk about the Lord, to find time to sing a song, a psalm, to sing a song, to say a psalm, to say a prayer for someone. Time. I have other things to do. I have other things to do. Praise the name of the Lord. But we realize, and we know, that God take a note of every one of his children. Every one of his children, God take a note. And God know everything that we do. If we have communion together, whether in the building or over the internet or over the phone, God knows. And God has written it up to our credit. Praise the Lord. So the, the Bible says, They that run a race run all, but one receive the prize. And, you know, so when we run, we run to win. And the race is not for the swift, and the battle is not for the strong. But we have to continue in the grace of God, in the mercies of God, in the love of God. So, one, so we want to receive the prize. Many want to receive the prize. But they don't want to run the race. And many want to receive the prize. But they don't want to fight the fight. The Bible says we must fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. This fight, you know, we, we, we are like, we're like soldiers. Every child of God is like a soldier. And when you're in the army, I always like to predict, to, to, to depict this. When you're in the army, you have to be, be, be prepared to fight. You can't be a little soft stuff, soft. Even if you go into the army, even if you go into army soft, you come out hard. You come out tough. And so the word of God demands, you know, that we have to take up our cross. And we have to fight the fight of faith. How do we expect to receive the crown? When we haven't done the work. But God 
has got a work for every man. <clears throat> There's many business now who are making their staff redundant. Many business. Lots of people are losing their jobs because of what is going on, the um, pandemic or the pandemic or the pandemic, whatever you want to call it. Lots of people are losing jobs. People are out of work. But you know what? When it comes to God, there's a job there for you. There's a yeah. job for every man. God has got work more than you can do. Praise the Lord Jesus. So God make nobody redundant. There is work. And praise the name of the Lord. God is always there to hand out the work. And the work we have to do is to do the work of God. Preach the word. That's right. Spread the word. Let the love, let the love flow. Let the, let the world see that there's something in us. Let the world see that we are children of God. I think the other day, um, Brother Dave was singing about uh, give unto the Lord Almighty. That there is something mighty about the children of God. There's something very powerful about us. We have to realize that the God we serve is a powerful God. And he has handed down the power to us. And it's for us to use it for his glory. You know, um, I think about a time there when um, in Acts of the Apostles chapter 5, we see that Peter, there was Sapphias and Ananias, which came before Peter. I think the husband came first and said, we sold the land for so. And they had hit back some of the money that they sold the land for. And they thought they could lie to the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> And Peter said unto Ananias, Did you sell the land for the soul? Hallelujah. He said, No. Yes, I did. And he fell. He fell. He fell if he, he died. Because he lied to the Holy Ghost. That is the power. That is the power. Then his wife came afterwards, Sapphira. And she said the seed she lied also, and they and she died. She said the the same people who take your husband out will take you out as well. Lied to the Holy Ghost. So you see, our God is a God of love, but He's also a God of consuming fire. And we have to realize the God, the power that He has bestowed upon us. We we are the son. They said the Bible says, "Now are we the sons of God." It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. Imagine, if imagine the love that God has for us. That Jesus says, I call you brethren. Imagine the love and the power that God has bestowed upon us. Let us not be uh, shaken. Let us not be shaken. Let's stand firm upon the word of God. Then after the Peter, after they took them out, the two that lied before the Holy Ghost, and the church was blazing with fire. The, the, the church was on fire because the Holy Spirit was moving upon them. And it came to pass that uh, they, they, they lay hold of the apostles and they put them in jail. They locked them up. And the Bible says that the angel came by night and took them out of the prison and locked back the door. Praise the name of Jesus. You see how powerful our God is? Now, when we talk about these men, God is still the same. And God can do the same for us as he did for them. We just have to realize the power of the God, of the God we serve and what he can do for us. So we cannot live a life of fear or doubt. But we need to stand up on the promises of God. And after they found them preaching in the temple, after they were locked up, they said, they, we come into the prison. They told the governor, we come to the prison. And we saw the, 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 the prison door lock and the guard outside. But the men were gone. Hallelujah. That is the power of God, brethren. That is the power of God. 
and they called this uh, they found the apostles teaching in the temple and when they told it, when they called them they said did we not tell you not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus and Peter said unto them <coughs> one of the apostles we ought to obey God rather than men the God of our father raised up Jesus whom he slew and hung on the tree we have to have boldness, my brothers, my sisters, we need to have boldness to serve God. We need to be bold to serve God. God wants us to be bold. Those let us say that was for the days of the apostles. It is for us now. It is for us now to stand up and be counted. Stand up and stand up for Jesus. And, and Acts, of, Acts of the Apostle 5 verse 40 says, And when they agreed, when they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, so imagine that they beat them, and commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name you see <clears throat> the apostles they were rejoicing when they were persecuted they were rejoicing when they were pushed aside when they were locked up in prison they were rejoicing they were singing praises to God you know they were rejoicing in the Lord because they knew they God called them to be soldiers to stand up and to lift up the gospel banner and they did not hide themselves and they, they declare the word of God there are people now which you may even know that they are afraid to lift up the gospel banner the gospel banner and they will make excuse so the other the other one said I have married I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come Oh my Lord, I cannot come to the supper. I have married a wife. So, why? Excuse. Another excuse. And excuse just go on and on. But what, what I'm saying now, brother, is that let us find time, more time for Jesus. Let us come together. It's time for us to come together. And I'm glad um, what I see uh, our brother David is doing, bringing his family together and bringing other people together is good. We have more churches now than before. Because first, before the, before the churches was like in the buildings. And the buildings was apart. Now we have churches everywhere. Every house is a church now. Praise the Lord. Everyone who wants to talk about Jesus can talk about Jesus in their home. Praise the Lord. Can lift up the God, can say, Thus say the Lord, shall, shall lift up our faith in prayer, in supplication, because we know what the Lord can do, and we know how the power of the Lord. <clears throat> so, there is no need, <laughs> no need for excuses. Praise the Lord. So, verse 21 of um, St. Luke chapter 14, <clears throat> And so the servant came, and shewed the Lord, then the master of the house being angry. Our God is a jealous God. He go said, ahead. go out quickly into the streets and into the lanes of the city and bring in the hither the poor, the name, the halt, and the blind. So, the good man was angry when those that were bidden to come made excuse it's angry it's just like now that you tell people about Jesus and they don't want to hear they make excuse you're welcome to join you in service in church you, and they make excuse this will make the good man the Lord angry for what he has done for us we should not cease to praise him for what he has done for us. We should not cease to glorify him for what he has done for us. We should not cease to worship him. It's just being grateful. 
When we serve God, it's just showing gratitude. It's just saying, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. You know, I always talk about right. Jesus when he, there was ten lepers. And the ten lepers, you know, leprosy is a very bad thing. Very, very bad thing when you have leprosy. Nobody can come near you because it's contagious. It's worse than um, coronavirus. So I don't, know, I don't know why they didn't start giving vaccination for, um, for leprosy. But never mind. But their ten men had leprosy. A very contagious disease. And they came and Jesus said, go your way. And while they were going, they were healed. They were healed because they obeyed the word of God. And out of the ten, only one came back to say, to say thanks. Out of the ten. So you see the kind of world we live in, brethren. We shouldn't be surprised why people turn away from God. Because, you know, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. People don't have any taste for righteousness. People don't have a taste for truth. And this is what we're up against. This is what we're up against. People don't have no taste for love, for joy, for peace, for righteousness, for holiness. People don't have no taste for the light. They love the darkness. The light come into the world, but the man love darkness rather than light. And this is what we're up against. This is what the church is up against. So he, the good man was angry that those who were bidden did not come. So he said to his servant, go quickly. Now the king um, business require haste. Go quickly out into the streets and into the lane of the city and bring hither the poor and the name and the halt and the blind. So you see when some people when people think they are something, they are not really anything in the eyes of God. Because the, 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 in, in, in the spiritual context, God said, go out here and bring the poor. The man that you thought maybe finished with him is, is insignificant. He don't mean anything. He's poor. Look at him. He's down on the streets. He's down in the dumps. He, he don't mean anything. The name. The man who can't walk properly. Or the man who will maybe only have one leg. Or one, one or no hands at all or whatever. And the halt. Those that can't move. Those are bedridden. You, 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 you don't, don't you know that God know these people? Don't you know? Don't we know that God love these people? The blind. Those are in the homes. Those that can't help themselves. Don't we know that God knows these people? And God loves these people. Amen. Yes. So he said, go, go bring them. Bring everyone. Because those that were bidden did not, was not worthy. You think when you say, when you turn away, when, when one turn away from God, they, they, they're doing themselves a misjustice. They, they're not hurting God. They're hurting themselves. They're hurting themselves. When you're bid to come to the supper, as I said, the parable is a heavenly story, well, a earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And this is what it's telling us. So when people hear the word of God and turn away from it, they're not hurting anybody but themselves. So he says, the servant says, and the servant says in verse 22, Lord, it is done. That's thou are commanded. And yet there's room. There is room. You see, heaven is a holy place. And there's, the Bible says millions, the word says, well, the songwriter says millions have safely landed and there's room for millions more. You think this earth is big? Heaven is eternal. Heaven is endless. Heaven don't have any borders. There's no limit in heaven. In this world, you can go from east to west. You can go from north to south. In heaven, there's no borders. There's no north, there's no south. Hallelujah. It's open. So there's room for millions more. And the, and the servant says, Lord, that was commanded. So he went out and found all the poor, the name, the halt, and the blind. And there was room. 
And the Lord said unto him, that his servant, go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. When we think, sometimes, you know, when we think about ourselves, we, we, see, we see ourselves as being isolated sometimes. We feel, boy, it's only me, it's, I'm the only one serving God. So I don't know. Because I think Elijah was in that position one time when he said, Lord, they kill all the prophets and his only, I'm the only one that's left. I think Elijah said that one time. And God said this, I have, I've left aside 5,000 who have not bowed their knees to Baal. So sometimes we feel isolated. Sometimes we feel that we are, it's just us. It's just us too. It's just us few. But there's room for millions. But there's room for millions. And there's millions of people all over the world of the same mind, the same attitude, the same love that we have. You would be surprised how many people all over the world is serving God, is loving God, is worshiping God, and is blessing God, and God is blessing them. Praise the Lord Jesus. We heard that John and the other partners see a great multitude. A multitude that could not be numbered. Numberless. It cannot number them. And he said, who are these? And the Bible said, these are they that came out of the great tribulation and has washed their robe white in the blood of the Lamb. The people love God. People serve God. Praise the Lord. They are they that so so he said, go out and compel them that my house may be filled. And it says in verse 24, it says, For I say unto you that none of those which were bidden shall taste my supper. So what does that mean? The, the, the price of the supper, it is so great. Attending the supper, it was a great privilege. But people did not realize. The privilege it is that they were called and they were they were invited you know they are invited to the supper many people take it lightly and even these days we can see people are taking it lightly people are taking the calling lightly the call has called us and people are taking it lightly but it's a very very serious call and Jesus said it all Go, none of those men that were bidden, none of the first ones that were bidden shall taste my supper. Come home. Come home is supper time. The shadows are lengthening fast. Brethren, it is supper time. Jesus is coming soon. We can see. By, this, by what is happening on the world that Jesus is coming soon we can see by this coronavirus everything has changed I tell you from a step into 2000 from a step into 2020 we like we step in a different world it's like we step in a different world What a day, what an age we're into. What an age we're into. And there's so much deception. It's, it's like if we look at things, it's like the devil has taken charge of this world. But you know what? The Bible, we, the Lord will keep his people. He keeps fresh fish in salted sea. And he will keep his people. He will keep us. We who believe in him. We who trust in him. We who call upon his name, we who worship him, he will keep us. He will keep us. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2, it says, I have heard in the acceptable day, in time acceptable. This is the day of salvation. This is the day of salvation. So we can't put off tomorrow what we can do today because tomorrow is not assured us we don't have any control over tomorrow we don't have to see tomorrow if by the grace of God he let us see tomorrow he says in Luke 21 and verse 23 he says heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away 
Take heed unto yourself, lest at any time your heart be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of life, so that they will come upon you unawares. As a snare it shall come upon them that dwell upon the face of the earth. Take heed, brethren, you who are serving God, continue. You who are communicating and worshiping God, continue. You who are praying to the Lord, continue. You're singing unto the Lord songs of praise, continue. Because there's a great treasure awaiting you. There's a crown awaiting the children of God. There's a blessed hope. Heaven is there. I'm going to prepare a place that where I am, he shall be also. But I'll go and prepare a place for you. We have a blessing. Hold on to your blessing. In verse 26, Luke 21, 30, 36, it says, Watch therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape the things that are to come to pass and stand before and stand before the Lord. Watch always. Watch therefore and pray always. Prayer. Communicating with God. Constant communicating with God. Is a is a is a uh, we we join together in unity, in oneness, in love, in peace, in joy, in righteousness. Stand, watch therefore and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape the things is to come. Because you know what we've seen happening today? There's worse things coming upon the earth. And I don't want to be a, sound like a pessimistic. But you know, if you go by what the Bible says, we are in the last days. Things has changed. Everything is not the way it used to be. And it's not going to go back to where it used to be. Because we are in the last days. Perilous times is here. Hallelujah. So we have to anchor our soul. Anchor in Jesus. That's what we need to do. Anchor in Jesus. Praise the Lord. And, and Paul is saying, in, um, Preach the gospel. Be instant in season. Out of season we we prove, we broke, exhort with all long suffering and all long suffering and doctrine. For Paul writing to Timothy said, The time will come. And listen, brethren, the time will come where they, where they will not endure sound doctrine. But they will their, but after their own lust will heap unto themselves teachers having itchy ears. Itching ears. And shall turn away their ears to, from truth and turn unto fable. So, time is coming when they will not endure sound doctrine. They will, after their own loss, heap upon to themselves teachers having itchy ears. But you know, when, when, when we have sound doctrine, it's wonderful. Because it's only this Holy Spirit inside of us can help us to endure sound doctrine. It's only the Spirit of God in His people that can help us to sustain sound doctrine. Because when we think about what is happening and going around these days, there's so many different um, doctrines and all sorts of philosophy that they want to take God, turn God into philosophy. God is true. God is God. He said, I am that I am. He is eternal. He is life. He's everlasting. Before time began, He was. When time ends, He is. That is the God we serve. So when we know sound doctrine, it is a blessing that we can endure sound doctrine. It's a blessing when we can sustain sound doctrine. And um, James, James chapter 1 and verse 12, it says, Blessed is that man that endured temptation when he's tried. He shall receive a crown of life, which is promised to them that love him. You know what? A crown of life? That is what the Bible promised he, us, his people. A crown of life. No more crying, no more sighing. No more dying. 
Hallelujah. But we have a hope. We are king and priest. We are king and priest to God, brethren. We are we are a holy nation. We don't we are out we are, we're not part we, we are out of this world. We are peculiar people. We are called out. Imagine that God has touched us, that God has put his mark upon us and said, This is my child. As so I always talk about, you know, Bible said that um when Rebecca was about to give birth, then there was two nations in her womb. And there were the two babies in her womb was fighting. And Rebecca asked God, so what mean it? What does this mean? And God said to Rebecca, There's two nations in your womb, and the younger shall rule over the older. When in before it was not that way, it's always the older one get the blessing. But God reversed it from the womb. And we see when the two babies were born, the first one come out, the Bible said, was red. And the other one was of dark complexion. And we saw Esau, how God said, I, Esau, I hate, Jacob, I love. So God has got a blessing upon his people. And that's why God is calling us. And that's why you now under the sound of my voice know that the blessing and the calling of God is upon you. May we be steadfast. May we be unmovable. Abounding in the works of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Knowing that our reward is sure in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. Just to say that we see what is happening in the world today. Let us not be confused. God is still in control. God is still at the helm. The devil is a liar. And whatever it is, God will look after his people. That's why we are saved. We are saved from the judgment that is to come upon the earth. Peter said that this world, the everything that we see, shall pass away with fervent heat. Everything that is in shall be dissolved. But the word of God shall stand and his people shall stand. May we continue to praise him, bless him, glorify him and continue in his grace. You who are keeping up the love and the work of God, may God bless you. May God keep you. May God continue to cause his face to shine upon you and bless you everlasting. I just want to say a little prayer before I close in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we bless your name. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for what you're doing for us. And we're thanking you for what you're yet to do. Bless everyone who is on this teleconference service. Let your hands be upon all your children on our families. Hallelujah. Help us, Lord, to look up to you, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, to lean on you. Help us, Lord, not to make excuses, but help us, Lord, to put you first because you did say in your word that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So help us, Lord, to serve you, to humble ourselves, to yield ourselves to you, Lord, and that you may use us for your